you know, I was going through, and I know I'm coming here. I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to, um, to teach or to preach, you know? And I've been going through um, First, Second Kings, and just in the book of uh, Chronicles, and I've been taking some note there on what they call the Jabez prayer. And this morning when I got up, I was about to turn on the television and the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to go and sit down and I want you to preach this this morning. And so that is what I did. I did my research and so on and I tried to write down from First Chronicles chapter 4. Verse 9 and 10. And I'm going to name it the prayer of an honorable man. The prayer. Because I think everybody knows, you know, the Jabez prayer as they call it. But when I look at it, I see him as an, and as the Bible sees it, as an honorable man. And so verse 9 and 10 read. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called him, called, called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called unto, unto the God of Israel, saying, O God, thou wouldest bless me and indeed and enlarge my course, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Let's pray. Our eternal Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, your grace towards us. I pray that you would help us as we look into this lesson this morning. It would be a blessing to each of us. Direct me, help me, as I would explain your word as simple as possible to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, just give me a couple of minutes. Let me just put my phone to alarm. Um, when I'm preaching and I get down into it, um, my mind, I stop thinking about time. And so I just want to, I forget to ask the pastor what time I should finish. Um, when I get... <laughs> you know, in the Caribbean, we'll say when you get done, you know, just preach. One time when I apologized for preaching too long, and a sister came, Pastor, you must not apologize for preaching too long. But the thing is that she, doesn't, she did not come back in the night. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just said, <laughs> okay. So the prayer of an honorable man. Now, some people like to call this, as I said earlier on, the prayer of Jabez. Now, the prayer of Jabez did not happen in a vacuum, as they would say. There were some outside influences which brought Jabez to utter this prayer. For example, it was his mother's pain in verse 19, and we would see that that no doubt would have brought him to this play, but place. But the prayer was, this prayer of Jabez was made popular due to the best-selling book, The Prayer of Jabez, Breaking Through to the Blessed Life 2000, by Dr. Bruce uh, Wilkinson and David Coop. Now in verse 9, we see his mother's pain. In verse 9, and Jabez more, was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with pain. His mother named him Jabez, meaning sorrowful or sorrow maker. Now, if we also look at the, as a matter of fact, we want to look, first of all, at the mother's pain, according to verse 9. And, you know, when I think about the mother's pain, think about, you know, ladies going to the hospital to um, have a child, and the, the pain they would have faced. As a matter of fact, 
during that time, I'm not quite sure if they do cesarean section. Uh, maybe they were not as developed as we are today, but um, she was in some type of pain, some type of sorrow, having Jabez. I remember my own wife having my son. She was in labor for 18 months, 18 hours, <laughs> not 18 months, 18 hours. And I, I said, you know, I am going home to pray. But I wasn't really going home to pray. I was going home because I couldn't take it. <laughs> 18 hours was a long time. But the thing is that when my son was born, he came out with his, on his back and his foot lap like this and his finger in his mouth. And I told my wife, I said, you know, this boy, we have to push him from day one because he's going to be very relaxed. And so true. So, so said, so done. Very relaxed. We have to be pushing this boy. Boy, do your studies. Boy, do this. Boy, do that. But in pain for 18 hours. And think about um, Jabez's mom being in pain for, we are not sure, how long my, uh, the umbilical cord, I think that's what, what you call it, was tied around my son's neck. And because of that, they had to do cesarean section. So it's a lot of pain, ladies. And of course, some of you have gone through that. It's a lot of pain. But let's look at the man himself, the man Jabez. Verse 9 said he was an honorable man. Now the word honorable means good and deserve to be respected and admired. Now let us now look at the prayer of the man, the honorable man. Because no doubt he would have been honorable and people looked at him as honorable and deserved to be respected because of his background. And so here we are seeing his prayer. No doubt his background would have brought him to this place where he come to God and give four requests. We see first of all the praise from God. So in verse 10, And Jabez called on the name on the God of Israel. Jabez called on the God of Israel. Now, Jabez knew who this God was. No doubt his brother, the, the fact that they said he was more honorable meant that his brothers were not as honorable. The fact that maybe his brothers were uh, uh, moved away from Jabez's God. But Jabez called on his God of Israel. But why? No doubt Jabez would realize that he is Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. Jabez would know that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And this, these are things that Jabez never needed. He would, have been, he would have known that he was Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my shepherd, the Lord my friend. He needed a friend. Because of his name and because of the pain that he faced. He was Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is our banner. Or something uh, someone said as lifted a standard. One who lifted a standard. He was Jehovah Thiskanu. The Lord is our righteousness. He is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord, the God of peace. So while his brothers were working to uh, uh, look into other gods, Jabez was crying out to the God he knew as Jehovah God. And so he was crying for grace as he lived through the meaning of his name. He knew that God was a source of all things. And so if there is anyone who is going to bless him through his sorrow, through the meaning of his name, it was the omnipotent God. And then we see, secondly, his cry for prosperity and victory. If you look again at verse 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on God, and the God of Israel, saying, Oh, uh, saying, 
Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my course. Enlarge my course. Jabez is saying to the Lord, Lord, let not my name define my destiny. Because, you see, sometimes we allow our name to defy our destiny. Or some people call us all types of names. We grew up and uh, they, they, we are abused by people, we are abused by parents, we are abused by uh, what, uh, whatever you, ch young people, you go to school and you're bullied in school. And so uh, sometimes you think, boy, maybe this is who really I am. Jebus, so Lord, would you enlarge my course? Lord, don't allow my name being a sorrowful one to define who I become. You know, it reminds me, parents, we have to be careful what we name our children sometimes. But you can understand the pain that Jabez's mom faced. She was in pain. And that's the way they would name children then. Sorrowful. Jabez, oh Lord, I do not want my name to define who I am. Lord, would you prosper me? Lord, would you give me victory over my name? Would you enlarge my course? You know, believers, that's where you and I should be at times. I, I remember growing up as a young boy, Some people normally ask me, are you an educator? I, I mean, I don't know. My wife was a teacher, and if I don't know something, I, I will ask my wife and so on. I learned to read in Sunday school. I actually, my, my, our Sunday school teacher, my sister Ralph, 89 years old, really wonderful lady. Every Sunday morning in Sunday school, she would take the Gideon New Testament. Some of you remember those Gideon New Testament. And every Sunday morning, the children would read the scripture. If a story, I mean, whether so, you read a whole chapter. And if this one can read and this one cannot read, you're supposed to help each other. But you're not supposed to laugh if somebody does not know the word because she's going to give you a nickname. So nobody wants a nickname from Sister Ralph, our Sunday school teacher. And so you're there to help each other. I grew up and I said, Lord, you know, people said all kind of thing about me. Oh, he's not going to do anything. I mean, I was the worst in Bible school. And boy, I, you know, the president of the Bible school would, would say, Brother Earl, keep your head above water. And boy, that's what the Lord helped me. My head was just above water. I was just keeping my head above water. But then I said, Lord, I don't want people to define who I become. I want you to define who I become. And so, um, writing five gospel tracts, I mean, I never thought. As a matter of fact, somebody read one of the gospel tracts, and they said the English was bad. I said, well, Lord, okay. I gave it to one of our deacons in church, who was a very brilliant man. And one day I went behind the church, and the gospel tracts were thrown behind the church. I took it to a missionary who was there, and he said, Brother, um, he liked the story. He said, I am willing to read this, but I want you to say the story was written by me. The track was written by me, but the story was told by you. And so I said, Lord, listen, I am not intelligent. I am not brilliant. You wanted me to write these gospel tracts, and so... I had them printed just like they were, and I received a letter from somebody who did not give their name. And they said, I read your gospel track, and she explained the life she lived, terrible life. And she said, because of your gospel, this gospel track, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. 
We must never define or allow people, especially young people, never allow people to define who you are. Never allow people to define who you are. You allow the Holy Spirit to control you. You, you tell the Lord, Lord, this is what I want at the age of six. I said, Lord, I want to become a preacher. I'm not sure if I made the right choice. But Lord, I, I want to become a preacher. I've seen preachers got, get knocks in their lives. And I mean, I had my U.S. green card. All my family live in the States. And, but the Lord wanted me to go to Barbados where I am ministering now. I gave up my U.S. green card. And everybody, why did you give up your U.S. green card? You could have been better off. Hey, listen to me. I might have been better off in the United States, but I'm happier being in the presence and where God wants. Prosper on my cause. Prosperity and victory he prayed for. But thirdly, he prayed for the presence of God's hand. Look at verse 10 again. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my course, and thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil. And that thy hand might be with me. He is asking for guidance and strength during his life of living out the meaning of his name. My name means sorrow. I was born in pain. I could have imagined the, the teaching that the mom gave him. Boy, this is your name. This is your name. I remember my, my wife, uh, uh, when my son uh, behaved badly, she would say, do you mean I spent all this time in, in labor and now you're coming to give me trouble? <laughs> Now, my, my wife is, is one of the strict, you know, those old-time teachers, very strict. One time, my, my son ran under the table, and she ran under the table uh, with my wife and couldn't get back out because he was afraid of lashes, and from then she started suffering with her back. But the thing is that I could not laugh. I had a serious face. I was laughing inside <laughs> because she was under the table, could Help, help me out. And I was there with my serious face and I tried to help, but deep inside I'm laughing because I said, you should not have been under there in the first place. Run behind a six-year-old. <laughs> and that thou, thy hand might be with me. He is asking for guidance and, and strength during his life of living out the meaning of his name. Look at Psalm 33, verse 18. I have to run quickly. Psalm 33 and verse 18. In Psalm 33 and verse 18... It reads... Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that, what? Fear him upon them that, what? Hope in his mercy. Jabez feared God, and Jabez said, Lord, I fear you. Lord, would you please, please be present with me during my time of sorrow. God's presence would always be with those who show reverence to him. Because we always think about, oh, he's a God we can fear. We only think about fearing God, about God's judgment. But there was that reverence of God. And Jabez, he reverenced God. He had a love and respect for his God, for Jehovah. Because he realized that Jehovah is the source of his strength. Jehovah is the source of, of power. And when his enemies come against him, only Jehovah can set up a standard against his enemies. Look at Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivered them. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. 
Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Sorry, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. In verse 9, here the Lord Jesus was teaching of a prayer. After this man that therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 13 reads, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The presence of God's hand. Jabez is praying, Lord, would you keep the presence, your presence, the presence of your hand on my life? And you know, parents, that is what you and I should be praying. That God, when our children go off to university or colleges, we need to pray that God would keep his hand upon our children. I mean, the philosophies you are getting in universities and uh, and these schools today, we need to always pray that God's hand be upon our children. That's what Jabez prayed. Lord, I pray that your hand, Lord, my name is sorrowful. Lord, I do not want to face another day with this name, but God, that is the day I have to face. And God, I can't face it without you. Will you keep your hand upon my life? But then he asks for the protection from God. Again, go back to our text in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, chapter 4. I mean, 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Look again at verse 10. And Jabez called on the, on, the, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my cause, and that thine hand might be with me, and that uh, thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Could you imagine? living a life of pain. My name means sorrow or sorrow maker. So it's possible because that's my name. It is possible that that's my name so I'm going to make others miserable as well. It's my name so you know what? I'm going to take up a gun and I'm going to just go and join the gang and I'm going to shoot down everybody. It's my name, so what? <laughs> what? That's my name. Jabez said, uh uh. <laughs> I'm going to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know my name. Very honest. I can understand why the Lord called him an honorable man. That thou mayest would keep me from evil on that day that I may not grieve thee. You know, in turn over to First Kings chapter five, and we're going to just read a few verses there. First Kings chapter five. Look at verse five through fourteen. First Kings chapter 5, just want to make sure I have it correctly here. First Kings chapter 5. Um, let me just check Second Kings chapter 5. I'm talking about Solomon. Just want to make sure I have my... First Kings chapter 3, I'm so sorry. I was saying, I was looking. First Kings chapter 3, sorry. Not chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. But it came to pass when Ahab, I want to make all oh, this a second, 1 Kings chapter 3. Look at verse 5. 
And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in, uh, uh, and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord thy God, thou hast made my, my, thy servant a king indeed, instead of David thy father. I am but a little child, I know not how to go out or come in. And that thy servant in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, Look down at verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this, thy so great people? And his speech pleased the Lord, and Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast uh, asked this, and has not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches or thyself for uh, has asked thee, nor asked for uh, asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Protection from harm. All Solomon asked was. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me an understanding heart that I may judge thy people rightly. Jabez asks for protection that thou mayest keep me from evil <clears throat> that it may not grieve me. Believers, one of the things that can grieve us is when we do wrong. Sometimes we the devil would bring it back to our memory. You remember the life that you lived? How terrible it was. Praise the Lord. The Lord saved us believers. And therefore, because God has saved us, when the devil reminds us of our past, we also need to remind him of his future. Because his place is in the lake of fire. Jabez said, Lord, would you keep me that I may not grieve thee. It, uh, my, whatever decision I make will not grieve me. But you see, in grieving him, it is grieving God first. Right. Always remember that. When we grieve, some, when we grieve and when we do harm to somebody as Christians, when we do harm to a brother, or when we say evil against someone, we first say it against God. That is why the prodigal son, when he came back home, he said, Lord, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. Make me one. Lord, give me protection on what happened. Look at the result. God answered his prayer in verse uh, 10 again. And God granted him that which he requested. This prayer of Jabez is a good example of the prayer of priority in our lives. Prayer of priority. We come before God with an honest heart. And God promised, you know, I am going to grant, I'm going to answer your prayer. Jabez was honest, and that's why he was called an honorable man. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, here we read in Hebrews 4, 16. Verse 14 said, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, 
that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Look at verse 16. Let us what? Therefore come how? Boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time. Jabez was in a time of need. And Jabez came boldly before God. And God answered his prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Everything that you and I would face in our life, all of the troubles, all of the sorrows you and I would face in our lives, all we need to do is to come boldly. That's the privilege we have. Come boldly into his presence. Believers, God is always there to answer our prayer. No matter how fierce and no matter how difficult. Young people, listen to me. I'm not sure what name you have. Maybe your name is Jabez. <laughs> Maybe your name, you have a name that is one of these negative names. Maybe you go to school and you've been troubled in school. Maybe you're at the university and you've been troubled, you feel frustrated. God, I need your presence. God help me. The Bible said the steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord. <laughs> hey, we want the Lord to order our steps like Jabez did. Let's fear God. No matter what we're facing, let's fear God. Let's put our trust in God. Jabez, the prayer of an honorable man, you and I could be honorable if only we would put our trust and our confidence. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways, like Jabez did. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Believers, let us keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Do not allow who you are to define who you become. Allow the Lord to always direct you and be in control of your lives, of our lives. Father, we thank you this morning again for your word. Lord, we love you so very much. We praise you and we magnify your holy and matchless name. Lord, I pray that you may keep your hand upon your people. You promise in Hebrews 13, 5, be content in what state you are in, for he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Lord, I ask for your blessing. Even these young people who are heading off to university, Lord, would you keep your hand upon them? God, would you prosper them? Would you bless them? Would you give them victory over every area of their lives, God? Father, we love you. We love you so much. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.